Mm, that's drunk. Hello, here is part six of this series that goes over some fan-made improvement patches for Super Nintendo games. To give an example of what an improvement patch actually is, there's a bunch out there that help fix the notorious slowdown that was so prevalent in early Super Nintendo games, and that covers everything from Super Ghouls and Ghosts to Super R-Type to Star Fox. There's also simple quality of life improvement patches, like in the last video I mentioned a patch that actually allows you to save your game in Jurassic Park. Imagine that! I mean, some people even make patches for some Something as simple as changing the colors of the buttons on a Super Nintendo controller in a Star Fox menu screen. Alright, that's cool I guess. To get these to work, follow the link for each patch in the video description, download the file, and use a utility program to join together the patch file with the game ROM. Each patch comes with a readme that should help guide you to make sure that they work correctly. I gotta start with one of the coolest stories involving retro gaming in the last while. A couple months ago, Unlisted Cheats on Twitter somehow uncovered a way to unlock a two-player mode in Super Punch-Out. Yes, that's right, one player can play as anime Jim McMahon here, while player two can pick from any of the fighters on the Super Circuit. It is really cool. The way to access this is through a series of button inputs on the second player controller, but now there's a patch that simplifies things a bit, where all you gotta do on the second controller is just hold start and then press start on the first controller, and you do the same thing again once you reach the opponent info screen. It's seriously a blast to try out each character and to actually be on the other side of a punch-out game. It's also comical how absurdly overpowered some of these guys are. Just two hits, and anime Jim McMahon is out like a light. This one is definitely worth checking out if you haven't already, especially if you're into Super Punch-Out, thanks to Doc Rowe for putting this one together. Next we got Chrono Trigger Plus, made by the great Ben and Mauron. And no, sadly the title Chrono Trigger Plus is not actually a streaming service. Instead it's a patch that adds a ton of cut content back into the game, and allows you to explore areas that were previously not able to be accessed, like you can wander around in 1999 and look for Savage Garden or something. Yeah, there's not a whole lot to do here, but as someone that's put in a gazillion hours into this game, it's a fun novelty at least. There's also a few balance tweaks here, and there's other stuff like how certain triple techs no longer require an accessory, so you can keep that slot open for something else. And plus Marley and Luca's physical attacks are buffed a little bit, so they're not completely useless if they run out of MP. Just real simple stuff like that, nothing too major. I like this hack because it almost feels like having a no clipping mode where you can go almost anywhere, kind of like ID clip in Doom. So yeah, if you're a fan of Chrono Trigger like I am, you'll enjoy this one. Of course, there's always tons of Final Fantasy patches to sort through. This one is for Final Fantasy IV, titled Free Enterprise, and it opens up the entire Final Fantasy IV universe all at once. You start with an airship, and you can complete any number of quests in any order. This is also a randomizer patch, where you can upload a ROM to the site I have listed in the video description, and it allows items, characters, and shops, among other things, to be put in random spots, with the ability to customize all sorts of different things, like if you want to turn off random encounters entirely, or if you want to start the game with a specific party, or if you just want to be a crazy person and have every treasure chest be empty and have shops sell nothing but cabins. If you're one of those folks that's put in a gazillion hours into Final Fantasy IV in any carnation, then you're really gonna enjoy this one. It's a huge ongoing community effort that even has its own wiki, so check it out. Final Fantasy V now has a patch that was just created a few weeks ago thanks to a huge team effort of about 15 people, and it's titled Final Fantasy V Tweaks. It combines the most recent iteration of the English translation, along with the ability to sprint on the world map, there's some better equipment for certain jobs to make them a little more useful, and there's fixes like learning blue magic without actually having to equip the learn ability. This is really just a huge compilation of tiny tweaks and fixes, like to the menu and item names. The readme file lists a gigantic list of stuff that goes into this patch, and as far as I can tell, it's all sensibly done and doesn't take away from the core gameplay experience whatsoever. This is one of those patches where, if you want to play Final Fantasy V today, you should do so with this patch. Here's two patches for Mega Man X. One is called Mega Man X Hard Type, and one is Mega Man X Soft Type. Both are kind of self-explanatory. Hard Type redesigns the levels and rebalances things a bit, so enemies take more hit points, even with boss weapons. But if you're not into that, there's also Soft Type, which despite the name, is a bit of a in-between difficulty between vanilla and Hard Type. Either way you play this one with both patches, the enemy AI has been adjusted, both for regular enemies and for bosses. Ammo for boss weapons has been 
reduced a bit, so you have to be smarter about when to use it, and enemies have had their HP rebalanced as well. I'm one of those weirdos that's played Mega Man X about a million times, so playing with a patch that scales the difficulty like this is pretty cool, and it makes you approach the game a different way, so I really appreciate patches like this. This is an interesting one for the death and return of Superman. We're used to seeing patches that increase difficulty, patches that were made for players that have put thousands of hours into certain games and wanted more of a challenge. Well, this person named Nintenja decided to go in the opposite direction. This patch is called Resurrection, and it gives Superman infinite lives, invulnerability, and an unlimited number of special moves. In other words, it's a more quote-unquote realistic depiction of Superman kicking the crap out of these flunkies instead of actually taking damage from them. I mean, come on, he's Superman. How would any of these nobodies even land a single punch? This patch lets you do typical Superman stuff instead of worrying about health and enemies surrounding you and not being able to do a special move. Here you just crush everything that moves without breaking a sweat like you're using a Game Genie code. Yeah, some people might find this one kind of boring, but I appreciate seeing something a bit different like this. Even games like The Adventures of Kid Cleats, also known as Soccer Kid, games like that are getting improvement patches too. I made a video about this game back in August of 2022, and I pointed out that the camera was a bit of a problem. It's just way too shifty to the point that it can make some people nauseous, and at the very least it's just plain annoying. Well, fast forward a few days, and boom, someone named Maxwell Olinda managed to create a patch that actually fixes the camera issues, centering your character and not having your viewpoint bounce from side to side with when you change direction. And what do you know, it makes the game much more palatable. I mean, you're still playing the adventures of Kid Cleats, but still, it's nice to see that sometimes certain annoying flaws can be easily fixed, and it allows you to look at a game differently, so I appreciate that. One of the better turn-based RPGs that never left Japan is a game called G.O.D. Growth or De-Evolution. It's a strange story that's well told, and it includes real-life locations and real historical figures who help the main character fight some aliens. I swear this game will get its own video someday, but in the meantime I do want to mention an easy mode patch made by M-Team, and it works with the English translation patch as well. Easy mode cuts down on grinding, so you're not getting into a random battle every two seconds, and it also doubles the experience and gold that enemies drop just to streamline the whole experience so you can get to more of the story without having to slog through the same battles over and over again. Some of these JRPGs can be a bit of a serious ask considering how long they are, and the grind in a lot of these games can push some people away, but with easy mode, however, you got no excuse. You gotta check out Growth or De-Evolution, and uh, that includes myself since I'm only a couple hours into it, but so far so good. It's a good time. Finally, there's the Goemon series. One really cool thing about these games is that they usually feature another entire game within itself, like how the first game enables you to play Gradius at the fair. In the fourth game, Ganbare Goemon 4, which never left Japan, there's a version of Time Pilot you can play. It's an old arcade game from 1982, and it's a pretty simple multi-directional shooter. But in Ganbare Goemon 4, you have to complete the game 100% to unlock it. No more, since there's now a patch that makes Time Pilot a standard standalone game. The game itself really isn't anything that special, it's still just a bare-bones Super Nintendo version of an arcade game, but it's pretty dang cool how a standalone game was buried in an unlocalized title from 25 years ago, and it's now finally been unearthed to play on its own. Alright, that's all I got for now. I want to thank you for watching, and I hope you have a great rest of your day!